Hello everyone, welcome back to the LCS Report. I'm Rob, he's Nick, and this is episode four already. Kind of crazy to think about. Uh, we're going to be heading into week two of LCS action, but before we do that, I always have one important question to ask. Nick, my friend, how are you doing? I'm doing well. How about yourself? Honestly, man, I couldn't be better. I I'm talking league with, with one of my friends, and uh, we're just kind of watching some... I, I don't know, interesting League of Legends, I feel like, and I, I missed it more than I thought I was going to. I was kind of excited for a small break after Worlds, but uh, as soon as I started watching Game 1 on the LEC, uh, I was like, oh, I want LCS back, like, right now. So, definitely, definitely loving definitely. it. Oh, yeah, I missed I missed it a ton, uh, and uh, kind of didn't, yeah, you just sort of don't realize it until it's, until it's sort of back, or almost back, and then when I got to the arena yesterday, I was like, ah. Oh, I missed this, you know, like it's a, I think overall, I mean, you know, it was, it was an entertaining week in LCS. Uh, I, I think that we, that you couldn't come away from that, not have had, having had a good time, you know, I mean, we'll, we'll, we, there's, you know, we could talk about regional strengths and all this stuff down the road. I thought we had some, some fun games, some good teams and great plays. And I'm happy about that. Oh, I couldn't agree more, man. I, I really couldn't. And, uh, we're even going to be getting into that. Uh, again, this is our Thursday episode. So if you didn't see last week's, I'll fill you in. I'm going to do this a little bit, you know, during the early portions of the season. Eventually, uh, you guys will need filling in because you will be watching every week like you should be. So, you know, totally fine with that. But we're going to be getting into our power rankings, our picks, and then we're going to tell you guys what you should be watching for. That's our goal is it's not just two friends talking about LCS, which is a great portion of it, but we also hope to inform you guys and give you our opinions. Sometimes they're going to be wrong, and that's okay. We'll own up to it. We're not afraid to admit that we're wrong on this show. Another thing that you may Another thing that other people. <laughs> Speak for yourself. I'm never wrong, so unless it's unless I'm voting for NR unless I'm predicting NRG over C9, that's what I'm wrong. But <laughs> that is true. That is true. Uh I will remind you we both went 1 and 3 on our first day of picks uh, last week, but I'm going to chalk that up to uh, our brains not working correctly for that very small moment of picking because then we big brained the 4 0 on day two. So, yeah, uh, we'll see. <laughs> but we are going to head into our power rankings. Uh, or, yeah, power rankings. I picks up. Spoiler alert. Don't look at those yet. Maybe I'll cut that out. We'll see. But we are into our. Power rankings. Now, I had our preseason power rankings. This are our, these are our power rankings after week one. I am realizing I did set this up for eight weeks. Also going to have to make those changes. See, small mistakes, but it's fine. I don't need to hear about it in the comments section. I'm going to change it, okay? And if I don't change it next week, then you can make fun of me. But for now, our power rankings are kind of the same. And I don't think that that's all that intentional, uh, to be honest with you, just in the sense that I know we have similar mindsets with a lot of stuff in the LCS, but I do think that there are a couple areas that we need to talk about uh, that a lot of people are going to be wondering. We don't need to say anything about C9. Everybody already knows they're great. Okay. I think us putting NRG over FlyQuest is going to be maybe a little bit more of a conversation starter. I wanted to know, Nick, why did you decide to put NRG over FlyQuest, and then I'll let them know kind of what I was thinking. So for me, uh, NRG lost to C9, the the clear best best team right now, um, at least thus far. And uh, so, you know, that's really the difference between 1-1 and 2-0 uh, as far as FlyQuest being the other 2-0 team. I do think that FlyQuest, uh, you know, definitely uh, came out of the gate stronger than I expected, and that was nice to see. But uh, I don't know. I still think that, I mean... I think this NRG team is still the, the clear second because this is not, you know, this is not, hey, here's who played, this is powerings based on who played this well. This is like how I think, like, based on what I saw right now, I do think, like, you know, I do think there is some movement, but I would still, I would still take NRG over any team that isn't, uh, isn't Cloud9 right now. Yeah, no, I completely agree with you. I, I wanted to point out as well to everybody for FlyQuest, and this is not a knock on them. They still had to play these games and play them well, right? You don't, it's like in in, in, a, in baseball, Nick and I are both baseball fans. The best team in baseball beating the, you know, the worst team in baseball. Sure, it's expected. But if you don't go out and you play your game, then they can 
easily still come out there and beat you. That's that's just kind of the way it works in in competition, right? And uh, but I did want to point out that FlyQuest two you know wins were over Shopify and Immortals, two teams that are very much near the bottom. The only two teams that are zero and two as well. So I need to see a little more from FlyQuest before I'm willing to put them over NRG. Um, you know, I wouldn't be against you know, maybe seeing them, uh, you know, come out and beat a, a top tier team, uh, a win over a C9 NRG team liquid, maybe even a Dignitas would be enough for me to be like, okay, this team's a lot more legit than I thought they were going to be. Uh, but for right now, I got to agree with you. And I, that kind of leads me to the other one too, because I still think we have a pretty clear top four right now. Dignitas, I think was a big change. And I want you to explain it to everybody the way you explained it to me because I was convinced by Nick to put them up here at five and and I think it was a really good reasoning as to why yeah so when uh when we did our episode last week and I had Dignitas fifth I was talking about how um I think that Rich's strengths are enough to get them enough games to come out of the gate strong because this team while they may not have the highest ceiling does have like a pretty clear game plan as to how they want to accomplish winning games uh, what was interesting is they didn't really do that this this week. Uh, Rich did not really – he was not the standout star. He wasn't bad by any means, but I thought XU played really, really well. Um, I thought Dub was was fine. You know, I think that he's – you know, it wasn't like he came to America and stumbled, you know, off the plane. Like he definitely, you know, uh, held his own. And I think that uh, if they can go 1-1 losing a game against NRG, again, second best team in the league – with Rich not being the star of the show, then I think that bodes relatively well. I don't know if Dig's going to break into the top four, but I think it's – I also wouldn't feel comfortable saying they're, they'd be bottom two. I think that they can string together enough wins with the individual talent, and especially if XQ X keeps, keeps playing like this. He played – I thought he had a really, really good week, even – even against NRG, like I don't think he did horrible. And then again, in their first game, he was an absolute monster. So – um, that was really, really nice to see. It was kind of more the XU and, and Dove show, I felt, um, which whereas Dig is really supposed to be the rich show. So I guess we're going to have to see how that goes. But I, I do think that um, if they can go 1-1 one, one not playing their game plan, and again, having that loss being to one of the top teams in the league, like, I don't know. I think that they have enough talent to where they can, you know, this is a playoff team. Yeah, and I got to add on to that too. I think um, XU's, I think, been a player that you and I both watched down in Academy who has, I think, been good when he has confidence, when he has the ability to kind of play the game the way that he sees it, and it feels like they're allowing that. The other thing I wanted to point out, too, because I think that this is what really turned it around for me, I, and I know that you agree with this, too, Tomo's a solid player, right? And the fact that Rich and Tomo weren't necessarily the stars this week, like, once you kind of reminded me of that, that's what I was like, okay, yeah, five seems like a perfect spot for them. Do I expect them to go much higher than this? I really do think it's going to be based on some of these other players. I think we kind of know what Isles is. I think we kind of know what Rich is. But it's everybody in the middle who I'm really interested to see what they're going to be. Is is Dove going to be able to be in, in like this surprise import kind of like Rich was, right? Did they strike gold again? That would be crazy. You know, is XU going to be, you know, that player that they decided to keep and build more around um, and and maybe reach that potential that we weren't expecting. And for Tomo, I felt like Tomo was good back when he was on C9 Academy. I was shocked that he didn't get more of a, a chance before this. If they can all kind of raise that ceiling, right? Because I, I wrote this actually, I think, in my power rankings as well. Their floor felt pretty stable, but it was their ceiling that I just didn't know about. If that ceiling gets higher... Look, I mean, Cloud9 is pretty clearly the top team, but, like, there are weaknesses with NRG, with FlyQuest, with Team Liquid. Like, Dignitas could push their way up and really force those other three teams that we have above them to have to sweat it out when they're playing against them. So, um, I was definitely glad to put to put Dignitas there. I did want to point out as well, real quickly, heading back to FlyQuest, they're going to have a big opportunity. Uh, they're playing Team Liquid and NRG this weekend. So, they go from the bottom to the top very quickly. So I think that this is where week two is going to be interesting. Um, the last, I guess, couple teams we'll talk about here. Um, 
I want to talk about Immortals being at the bottom. You said it on the last show. I, I think that it's worth bringing up again, um, even with the little time in between that we've had. I am really worried about this Immortals team, dude. I, I am scared that, you know, I thought that maybe Tactical could be enough and that, you know, Armeo would have enough um, wisdom from his years of playing in the past that this team could be interesting. And, and you know, for those who don't know, Castle and Mask specifically were former LCK Challenger players that just were never really given a shot. They were never terrible. They were never, like, super amazing or anything, but it felt like they would fit well, I think, in the LCS, and they just did not look good. Mask specifically looked awful this past week, and the more I've dug into it, the more I've thought about it, I am really worried about this team, and I don't know if you have anything to alleviate that. Uh, maybe some ibuprofen for the headache they may cause me when I watch their games, but I, I, I don't know, Nick. I mean give me some hope maybe or, or or are we just really at the bottom with this team i mean uh, i do think that they're i had them ranked last in my power rankings before the season week one definitely didn't change that i don't think it's like, like I say, again i don't think it's impossible for them to win a game but they need to be i mean this is a team with that kind of i feel has like at least from what we've seen one way to win right now what i'd like to see them do is put all the eggs in the tactical basket it is telegraphed it's what you're gonna expect but this is a player who is very very like he is the most coin flip he carry if he's ahead in lane like he, he might carry the whole game for you and get 10 kills if he's behind in lane you are not going to win this game i don't care how well the team, <laughs> team is do. He, they showed his stats at like 14 minutes last year in lane and it, he was like nine and five when he was ahead in gold at 14 he was oh and nine or something like that when he was when he was behind um i really think this team needs to uh get ole on a prime playmaker in a weird way i think ole is the main carry of this team um, have him set up tactical for success. Armeo is an intelligent pathing jungler. That's his greatest strength. So I get the idea of being unpredictable and being cerebral is good, but he needs to be creatively pathing kind of the way that Boogie did in TSM last year, where he had these really weird, interesting level two routes on like Elise and stuff like that. Do whatever you can to get tactical ahead. I don't know enough about Mask yet, but Castle played under Keen. You know, he was, that was his, I mean, he, he was the challenge, you know, he was, Keen was the guy he was looking up to in Challenger um, on KT, I think. Sorry, the, the, the exact team is KT. I'm pretty sure it was KT. That's a hell of a guy to learn from. So what I'd like to see them do is you need you don't just need your bot lane. Your bot lane isn't just your greatest strength. It's also your biggest weakness if it loses. Give bot lane everything. See how it goes. See how Castle hand, handles, you know, handles people on his own. Like test these Korean players' individual skill level. It's obviously going to take them some time to gel, but – See if Castle can hold his own against, you know, the LCS top laners. And Mask, I, I I don't know enough about him to make any, you know, great uh, declarations about him. I do know that that was a pretty bad Azir game, um, where Azir in almost every other game he played was kind of the standout champion. Um, again, small sample size, but I, I don't know. I, I, I am I'm a little concerned about Mask. Uh but I think we're going to have to see, but really, I really, I just want to see them. I want to see them just try, try, try something, you know, I'm not, they didn't try things this week, but I, I just, I, this is a team that really has maybe one way to win right now. And thus there's stuff that we don't know, you know, Hey, maybe week four, like mask and castle, like take the, the, the training ways off and it's crazy. Right. I don't know. But right now, uh, it just looks like another Immortals TM season. And I hope that that's not the case, but Week one did not do much to inspire any hope for me that uh, I would be wrong on that. Yeah, we would love a little Rock Lee uh, weight drop from both of them. That would be fantastic because I think I did expect more out of Immortals than what they showed. I mean, not much. I still had them at seventh compared to your eighth, but um, I really uh, I worry about this team. I worry that they may, they may run the gambit uh, and that we may be cheering them on in week six for – please just get one win <laughs> that would be great so yeah uh i mean hotline does have a high ceiling i mean in the past we've seen ole compete at an elite level mm -hmm. i mean even going back from this break he got ranked one in korea like i he like i said i think he's clearly the best player on this team i think if he and tactical develop synergy we see what, when tactical is clicking with his ad carry i mean with the support excuse me what he could do especially when given, you know, like, I think you kind of have to put all the eggs in the tactical basket. He is a feast or famine kind of player. He's like, if Draven was a, was a pro player, you know? And I, 
I think you kind of have to play that way, especially if the other routes aren't working out. So unless Castle emerges as like Keen Jr. and can carry games or, or Mask and Armeo develop some more synergy. Um, but Armeo had a great split last summer. People forget that JoJo was his mid layer. Yeah. Not saying that made everything easy, but I'm saying that Mask, JoJo, JoJo Mask is not, at least now. So um, I don't know. I, I, I hope that uh, they come with a more cohesive game plan, uh, but also. You know, it's not like I thought they lost those games in draft. So it's 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 going to be uphill battle for them for sure. Yeah. Well, uh, sorry, Mortals fans. Uh, you know, I I don't have a lot of hope for them. Doesn't sound like Nick does either. But we'll see. You know, that's why you play these games in the regular season, guys. Okay. As much as people like to complain about regular season, this is what it's about. It's time to come together, figure things out, so that when you get to the playoffs, then you can do cool things. With that, we're gonna hop over to our picks now. You know. Nick and I, like I said last week, we went five at three. Okay, guys? We're great. Yeah, day one was tough. But but it was day two. It was day two where we really shone through. So um, we'll go through these really quickly here, and then we'll, we'll decide, you know, uh, our games uh, that you guys are going to want to watch for. So, um, you know, Cloud9 are going to be coming out against... Uh, I got this here. Sorry, Dignitas, even though we just hyped Dignitas up. And I will say this, there's a world where Dignitas could upset in this game. I don't think it's very likely, but I would say maybe 10% chance, one out of 10 times, they're going to come out and win this game. And that seems pretty reasonable. So yeah, we'll see. But right now we've both got uh, wins there. NRG coming out over 100 Thieves as well. Um I don't know uh, if there's a whole lot more to say about this than we think they're the second best team. Uh, 100 Thieves are not. Uh, but in all seriousness, I just do think the team cohesion of NRG is going to easily beat um, 100 Thieves there. Um, I'm trying to get down to where we have our, I guess, uh, differences here. FlyQuest for both of us uh, over Team Liquid. Actually, I do think we should talk about this game because you and I both have felt that Team Liquid... Uh, could have a stronger split or could be, you know, stronger than this. Uh, Nick, what do you think of this game? Why why are you picking FlyQuest here? I'm like, this is probably the game I'm most excited for this coming week because I think it's the, we have two teams who are relatively elite in the LCS and also like a very close match. We both had TL coming in at slightly stronger than FlyQuest. And then I thought that then TL played a little worse than FlyQuest in week one. So I think we're set up for like what could be a really interesting even matchup. I think it, what it comes down to is TL need a bit more time to gel as a five unit, and FlyQuest is doing kind of what uh, I believe what you said in the last episode, uh, allowing their their bot lane, their younger bot lane, to you know acclimate and really relying on just the the intuitiveness of these of these veteran players. Like they they the top side all clicked together so well, and uh, I will uh, be I will have an interview with Jensen after this two a week. Um, on the gamehouse.com later this week where we kind of talk about that start and how things went compared to his expectations because they looked a lot more together on the top side. So I think it's a matter of like TL might want to try to ex- expose the bot lane or maybe they want to just like try to play play even. And if they can dismantle the top side, maybe all of like West all just falls apart. I think it's just really interesting given how both of these, the way that these teams rosters are constructed and then how week one went for them. The reason I'm taking FlyQuest is because I just... I expected TL to be the team that was going to gel faster than FlyQuest. And I don't know if one more week is going to be enough. I think this is also extremely close. Like it's, it is, it is 50, 50, but if I, if I have to, I think that I'm more confident in, in FlyQuest and uh, guys like inspired and, and Weepo um, to be able to facilitate around the map even uh, a little bit more, a little bit better than the, the newer pieces of uh, Team Oil, TL and Impact and OMT uh, right now. Um, but again, this is, I would say this is probably the closest match we've seen in LCS in, of the first three days. Um, so I'm, I'm really excited for it. I think that says a lot about that NRG C9 game too from last week, but... I will agree with you. I, I, I have to admit I was wrong. It was way less close. I was I thought it was going to be a close NRG win, a close NRG upset, and I was very wrong. So I would say, yeah, this this is the matchup, and I think you know this is going to be. It's it's. I think it's sort of 
the fight for the top three the top three spot along with NRG and C9 early on. So should be a banger. No, I can't I can't disagree with you whatsoever. I, I'm really excited about this game and I think uh for me I'm looking at, you know, are we gonna see Inspired Jensen looking as good as they did last week? Because they I think were easily the standouts to me on this team. Um and I think if they can do that, you know, umpty and and uh APA I think have their uh different struggles, but um, you know, i think they can come together and be a really honestly fantastic uh mid jungle duo in the future but uh that's the future and this is week two so we'll have to see really you know how that plays out but i i am really excited for that game um continuing on last game of the week we have shopify rebellion uh taking out immortals you just heard us talk about how worried we are for immortals i think this gives shopify a chance to i don't know i i want to call them the rebels it just sounds like more fun i don't know copying the calling them shopify kind of bums me out to be honest with you but sorry get off that quick soapbox there uh hey no i'm here i'm with you man i'm, I'm with you <laughs> we're the rebellion you know as a star wars fan i'd love that um uh this team anyways i, it, I think it's a way for them to get off the schneid uh pretty quickly and and show that their first two games were really uh you know they they could have won either of them and i think maybe they should have but uh we move on here and we've got our first difference 100 thieves and dignitas i'm gonna start here on this one because we both went back and forth on this one nick graciously allowed me to make my pick here to be 100 thieves and i do mean that he was very nice about it because i went back and forth so 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 much on this one but i do like 100 thieves and i think river i i, I said it on the shows last week i wrote about it as well um, it feels like River feels like who he to me in the sense that he goes to a team and I think he does more than what people expect necessarily. Like he's just not rated correctly. He's so not that he's vastly underrated, but he's just not given, I think, the respect that is due to him at times. And well, the problem is, is that I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut no, you no, off. You, you, go, go no, you go, you go, you go. The problem is that River's strengths are unsexy. He's yep. not going to be yep. making these crazy plays like uh, Blabber does on, on Kindred. Though, I mean, he can play these picks, but his his greatest strengths are what he brings to a team from like a leadership position, communications. He's such an intelligent jungler. Um, I think we saw that in 100 Thieves went over TL. I thought that was River just hard carrying that game. No, no disrespect, Sniper had a good game. Other members of 100 Thieves played well, but if you looked, uh, it might have been hard to tell on stream, but like, River was doing, I'd say, ninety-five percent of com the comms, like, like, like on a on a high level, you know, like HAI high level, like, you know, he he was really <laughs> micromanaging like his his teammates, and understandably, we, he has a young team with not a lot of experience, and he just he just took that game by the reins, and I thought he was incredible. Um, and uh, you know, I even overheard one of his coaches saying to him, like, you know, straight up like in the arena, he was like, it was like, Hey, you know, River, you hard carried gums. Like everyone else was a little nervous, but you were amazing. And it just, you know, anything a hundred things does this season is going to be that guy putting together another incredible season. He was, I can't believe he didn't even get MVP votes last spring. It was such a, such a crime. And yeah, I mean, he's he's the linchpin for this team. If, if one of these wins this game, it'll be River being like, I know how Dig plays. Actually, he used to be my substitute. <laughs> just completely is going to pick them apart. But um, that being said, I mean, I think if 100 Thieves loses any of the individual matchups, like, you know, Dub gets the better of, of Quid, especially the solo lanes. You know, if Rich gets the, the better of the inexperienced sniper, I mean, things can go, go pear-shaped really fast. Yeah, and I think that that's where we separate just a tiny bit because I think another player that is, because of such the weird year that he had last year, I think Ayla actually doesn't get enough credit for the experience that he does have. I know it's not necessarily all at the LCS level, but um, and I do view him, even though I know a lot of people like to compare him in Isles, like, especially going into this split, uh, mostly probably because of you know both of them coming from uh, down under area. Uh, I think that he's got a lot more to offer. And I think that he and Meech are going to be, I think a better duo than people would expect. And I think that they're going to be more than enough, um, you know, for, for Tomo and, and Isles. So like you said, I think you're right. I just don't think, I think that sniper is also getting really 
vastly underrated. I don't understand why this has been like the prodigy child of the LCS. Like even before Tenacity, before, you know, Danny, like Sniper was in Challenger at 12 years old. I mean, we've known about him for five years. Think about that. And he's just getting his chance. He pulls out the ribbon. Yeah, game two didn't go super well, but you know, I think that's just more of uh they're gonna have they're gonna be a team that has a lot of ups and downs, I think. But I just think that this Dignitas team, <coughs> excuse me, is not at the level yet to be able to 100 percent overcome 100 Thieves. And I think, you know, if we're looking at Dignitas roster, 100 Thieves roster, the best player on the map is going to be River. And I think if the best player on the map is the jungler, especially one that I didn't know that he was doing 95% of comms, which I makes a ton of sense to me with this team. But if that's the case, and they already trust him that much, as long as he's making good calls, which I think he will, you know, compared to XU, I'm just going to have to give it to 100 Thieves. I've actually convinced myself even more now. I'm less on the fence than I was before. So <laughs> good, so good. Yeah. I mean, to clarify, I don't think that's how they want it. I'm sure they want a more steady flow, but River's clearly the main shot caller. But then, I mean, like I said, he has a lot of young players, a couple guys making their LCS debuts. Like people were, were jittering on stage. You're up against Team Liquid. Sniper is playing River against Impact. Like they're, those guys are going to talk more, but River, instead of being like, well, he just he just took the game in his own hands. Like he can just do, we saw him do it when, uh, you know, on, on Dig in the LCS years back with Jarvan, where he would just, take over these games when if his teammates weren't able to really like get something going he is the he is the go button for this team so I, i'm with you there i would say river is the best player on the rift for either of these teams will he have a lane to play through that is going to matter enough uh, to get the win i i'm not sure um sure. but i i do think dig in 100 is also a very close game in the way that fly and tl is albeit for a much like uh less elite position in the standings so to speak yeah without a doubt um but that's another game i'm definitely excited to to watch uh we have c9 winning again we're not going to talk as much about c9 because like why gush over a team that's already very good well, wait who's 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 their opponent in week two it's a shopify i mean sorry yeah no, no. that's that's just i mean not i mean and maybe insanity and boogie are much better than people i think are giving them credit for it especially yeah but i mean i learned my lesson from the energy match man it's a c920 <laughs> angle like it's it's it, <laughs> They 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 won't go eighteen zero. They'll, they'll they're going to lose some games, but not this week. <laughs> All I'm going to say is I have learned over my many years of picking games, when the best team is playing well, you pick them until they stop playing well, and then you continue to pick them because you're probably going to get those right. And if you end up getting fifteen out of the eighteen games right, then you're looking real smart. So. Little advice, little advice for those of you who go out there and pick. Uh, when there's a very clear best team, you just kind of stick with them for a while <laughs> until they give you a reason not to, until they play FlyQuest. My, I normally have like a 70% pick rate, which I'm pretty proud of. FlyQuest single handedly got me down to 64% for last split. So um, sometimes that doesn't work out, but you know, it's neither here nor there. All right. No, no one could have predicted the flag was collapse last summer. So cut yourself some slack there. <sighs> the most crazy thing. Um, okay. The uh, last two games, uh, we'll quickly go to this one. TL over immortals, not a big surprise in game eight. It's game seven here that we do have a bit of a split off um, NRG versus fly quest. I ended up picking fly quest. You went with NRG. What's your reasoning for NRG? I think Masu and Busi are going to get their proper LCS welcome as a duo this game. I think FBI and Huey are going to put on a click. Um, I don't think they played poorly at all in the first week. I think, but I think it was a. I I I I I don't. It wasn't like they were dominating, right? But I think that, I think that we see contracts just full send bot lane, and I think that's the right choice with the styles of these teams. And I think that. Uh, you know, FlyQuest's core has come together on the top side pretty well, but I mean, we, you know, NRG's core has been together much longer. Um, even if their their strengths are less individual, I just think overall, uh, I don't know. I I think overall, their uh, the bot lane advantage is going to be what matters, and I think NRG has proven they know how to execute around that. Uh, and 
I think if they if they hit Flyquist where it hurts there, I think it's going to be. I don't think it's out of the question if Flyquist could win, but I, I definitely would favor NRG here, especially after like they're not happy about losing to C nine. Maybe it was expected for some people, but I mean, that's not how you want to come back in like on your finals rematch, right? So I mean, albeit with one different player, but they know like their new player has played with their eighty carry for like like years. at this Many point years. like fifteen percent of his lifespan, right? So like. Um, I think they're going to be really strong in week two. Like I, uh, and I think that they're going, this is going to be a matchup that looks like it should be close. And I, I think if NRG, if, if FlyQuest win, it'll be close. If NRG win, which is what I'm predicting, I think it'll be like smash. I think it'll be FlyQuest shown to be mortal, honestly. And I think that you are probably right. These are one of the games that, um, again, after picking for many years, this is just one of those gut games for me. And I don't know how to describe it other than the fact that I do think that NRG are the better team. I think they're a really good team. But my gut is telling me that Inspired is going to do something special this game. I don't know why. I don't know if it's maybe just because I've watched him basically since he started. Uh, at least, you know, at the highest level. I didn't watch him in the ERLs or anything. But, like, I just do think that he is a really special player. And I think that he is going to have the opportunity to come out and remind everybody that against contracts who I think has a limit, I think he has been consistently playing close to his ceiling. And I think that's awesome. And I love seeing him be that good, honestly. But I still think as just an individual, I think inspired is better. And I do think that he is going to make a play that we're going to be like, oh, that's right. This is inspired, and it's going to ultimately help them win. I think it's going to be a really close game. I think it's going to be an extremely fun game. I do think, like you said, I I have a very good <laughs> – how would I put this? I have a very good inkling that uh, that bot lane is going to get a nice little uh, smackdown. Uh, it's going to be a, hey, welcome to the LCS. Let me smack you around a little bit and show you what it's really like down here. And I think you're absolutely right on that. But I think for some reason that inspired, just going to turn it around. Jensen's got plenty of experience. Blippo has got plenty of experience and they're just going to find a way to win that game anyway. So, um, so um, yeah. it's, it's not out of the yeah, question. It's just a gut. You no, know, it's not out of the question. I mean, obviously I do. I, I personally think inspired is a better jungler than contracts. One thing I really like about this matchup though, is that I, I like about contracts as a player in general is that, it's hard for me to evaluate him as a top jungler in the league, but one could argue no jungler serves his team stylistically better. Like he becomes a better jungler for NRG because of the balls to the wall, selfless play style he plays is perfect for what this team needs. Whereas Inspired is more of, I feel, defines a team. He carried several games on, he's been a carry threat type of player for every single team he's been on. Contracts is more of like, not that he can't like get kills and play damage champions, but I see him much more as someone who's going to risk it all level two or level three and like win you the whole early game in a single play where inspired is going to be cerebral. He's going to be more calculated. So this jungle matchup, like these guys are probably the most stylistic extremes that we have in the LCS, like in terms of opposites. And I feel like it's like, like you said, inspired, it would be an inspired leading FlyQuest to a victory in spite of maybe a bot gap. Right. Whereas I think it, and whereas contracts, I think it's a matter of him before inspired, you know, sets up his, you know, his whole game plan, like just it's contracts flipping the game on its ear in like five, in the first five minutes, which is what he's, which, what he's good at. Um, and I think it's going to, it may come down to that. Definitely. So I think the jungle matchup is huge. I'm glad that you highlighted inspired. Um, and I, uh, and for the record, like, I'm glad you brought like, like, I don't, I thought Jensen was fine last year, man. Like I think I know Dig had their problems. I thought he was still a good player. I, I I've always been a fan. I, I mean, I've I've appreciated his play for a long time. I, I won't say that I don't have a little bit of bias uh, with him, you know. Uh, but I don't think he was the problem. I think he was far and away the best player on Dig. I thought he had a great week one here. I think that in the way that you think he's overrated, I think he's very underappreciated, and I think that uh, he's really fallen out of favor in a way that I that doesn't make sense to me. Um, I don't think it's, he's the kind of guy that Palafox is going to roll over in the same way that Weepo is not going to roll over to to Dokla. So I really do think, like you said, it's going to come down to the jungle matchup, and, unless of course uh, the bot lane is left unattended or like because like in the straight up two v two, like I'm worried for Masu and Busio. Like yeah. I think we should expect to see the junglers down either down there or basing their game plans off of whether how they want to like you know if they're going to leave their bot lane, if Flacco is going to leave their bot lane out to dry, try to win elsewhere, or just try to play through the inspired way or or if they're going to try to 
just kind of three v three bot and and hope that they win that you know win out on that. It's it's going to be a really really interesting matchup though because the styles of these teams are so different and the way the junglers get the party started for both these teams couldn't be more opposite. And, and I think that that's a perfect way, honestly, for us to kind of wrap this episode up, to be honest with you, Nick, because I think that I think you're right. I, I have felt that that Jensen, I said it on the last episode, I felt in the past that he's been overrated. I think now he's kind of being disrespected a little bit. Um, but uh, I, I do think that he's he's a special player, too. I mean, he does make plays. Most of the time, it always feels like it's at random times, but it is significant in uh, during that time. So. Um, I will be interested to watch this game. I, I think that we've got some great matchups coming up. I think week two is going to be a lot of fun to watch. Um, I think especially day two is going to be a lot of fun to watch. So, uh, you know, if, you, if you're finding the show and for some reason you haven't watched the LCS yet, this split, I would highly suggest that you hop on. Because, again, it's on Saturdays and Sundays now. You know, we shouldn't have to be doing the LCS dirty work and, and advertising for them, but... Now, I guess I guess that's what we'll do here. You know, we'll we'll give them a little bit of a shout out. I mean, it is called the LCS report after all. So, with that, do you have any final thoughts, Nick, before we hop out of here? Brief touch on one more matchup. Uh, I'm yes. calling uh, Shop- Shopify versus Immortals Battle of the Week. W E A K. Those are my two bottom teams. I think Shopify is much better, and I I think that if Immortals doesn't beat Shopify, this is their best chance to get a win, though. Like, especially if if you know. Shopify still hasn't settled on their exact bot lane yet, like how we talked about Immortal strengths and weaknesses earlier. So I think like there's a real chance that if uh, Immortals can't beat Shopify, we're looking at a, uh, a a winless first half for Immortals. So it might not be the uh, highest quality game, but I think it's going to be a super fun barn burner, and I'm actually like really excited for it in a kind of a twisted way. If you can't tell, we love the LCS. When we're talking about Immortals Shopify games... I feel the same way, by the way. The same way. I was about to say, like, if if I'm excited for that one, no. But seriously, it should be a should be a good time, and that's that's what I like about the LCS this year is that, like, regardless of the level of these teams, I think there's a fun reason to watch all of them. At least for me personally, Uh, there's players on each that I like, like their play style, like see them do well. Like, I can pick out at least one player that like, oh, he's worth watching. Like, Immortals, I haven't been impressed so far, but like, I'll I'll watch an Ole game any day, man. I I think that guy's great. Um, And I hope that he can lead this team to something more than what we've seen so far. I hope so, too. I hope so, too. And, uh, yeah, we'll have to see if we're right. Let us know in the comment section below if you think we are crazy people um, and and you you see a matchup that maybe we didn't give enough attention to or maybe one that you completely disagree with us on. Uh, We're always down to uh, discuss that, but... um, yeah, we got a fun week of uh, LCS coming up, and we'll be back next week uh, with uh, our Tuesday show to discuss how our how our predictions went and how the week went. But you know, with that, we'll catch you guys on the next one.